Hello, it's Scott here from Digital Puppets. Uh, very recently, we have updated our website, www.digitalpuppets.co.uk. And if you didn't already know, we used to have a site called the Avatar Store. What we've done now is we've incorporated that into our main website. We might still have um, avatarstore.com com or .co.uk, I'm not really sure off the top of my head, probably still pointing at the new page, but anyway, um, if you check out our website and see our shop page, you'll see that we've started putting in a bunch of free puppets and puppets for sale. Now this little fella here is one you might recognise that we've had for a while, and but I've just updated this one, so this is an update for 2023, I've made some tweaks to it. Now. In the previous version, he had turns and walks, and I've simplified it a little bit. And the reason for that is that I've added in motion library and full body motion. When you have the full body turning on this particular model, it can lag a little bit. And I just wanted a more streamlined version, which is much you know simpler to use. So let me show you, first of all, give you a general look at the puppet in case you haven't seen him before, what you can do, and I'll also show you the updates that I've added to it. But first of all, well, let's have a look first of all just at the general puppet. You can notice that I've added in some parallax features. Um, the pupils on the eyes I am controlling with the left and right keyboard, and sometimes I will also use the mouse dragger if I want to be a lot more precise. Hang on, let's just limit the range there. When you limit the range in drag, what that means is is that it's not when I do drag the eyes around, it's not also picking up the hands as you just saw it done there. Right, so sometimes I use the mouse for the eyes if I want to be very precise where the character's looking, but most often I'm just using the keyboard left and right, up and down and diagonal. Um you'll also notice I've got a a little bit of a turn on the nose there because Instead of building all the different head turns and whatnot, and then increasing the size of your puppet, and then you know you get issues with lag, I like to keep everything as much as possible in one position puppet, especially if it's a kind of presenter-based puppet, and you know something that you might use for Twitch or talking to your audience on YouTube. And so I add this little feature just to give the illusion of the face turning left and right. And the way that that is done is with head turner. So as I'm turning my head, I've got that little feature on the nose and it is flipping between the left and the right. Um, it's got draggable arms and I'll show you the movement function in a bit. This character also comes with a whole bunch of expressions. Let's put that arm back down there. So we've got a kind of unimpressed look, a grin, Annoyed, smile, sad, you know, impressed by something, content, unhappy, surprised, scared, and happy. Now, those are just a couple that I've grouped into um, trigger buttons, but you can also, you know, activate the eyes and the mouths by themselves. For some reason the eyebrows is missing here, but I will add that in. I'll add in the eyebrows as well um, if I put it on the store. Now the reason that's important, if you check out um, our tutorial page, we've got a bunch of videos that shows how you can animate 2D puppets in Adobe Character Animator. And I use the swap sets in the layers when I'm animating because literally, you know, so. These eyes are a swap set, the mouths are a swap set, the eyebrows are a swap set, all the different hands are a swap set. And then when you are animating the timeline, you can just go along and drop in right small here, raise eyebrows there, and it just increases the speed of your production massively. I'm not going to go into all that now because, as I say, there are dedicated videos on our YouTube channel, or you can find them videos on our tutorial page on our website. Right, so... What else is this puppet doing? As I mentioned, I have added in the one of the new features to Adobe Couch Animator that came out last year, which is the um, motion library. So before I get to that, if you click this little icon here, 
that is full body tracking. Now I've got a small office, so this isn't gonna work as well. But if you can get further enough away from the camera and then calibrate it, and then you move your arms around, it will track your full body. Obviously, like I say, I haven't got the room to back up, but it does work pretty nicely. Um, and then, yeah, we've got motion library. So let's try out some of the motions. Let's go for standard walk. You can still move your head around and whatnot and fire off. All those expressions. Um, you can record whatever actions you do. You can tweak the settings for each of these. Now, the one thing I'll say about motion library is that there's a massive amount of motions that you can add to your character. In fact, let's just have a quick look. You've got a lot for gestures, sporting, so, you know, that's like throwing, kicking, stuff like that. Jumps, fight moves, so, you know, punching, kicking, dance moves, running, walking, idols. There's a whole bunch. They don't always work because each of these um, pre-made motions, you know, are set up for some characters that are profile, some characters that are frontal. Um, you can tweak the orientation, but it is a little bit of trial and error. Again, I'm not going to go massively into this at the moment because there is a dedicated video all about how motion library works. And that was made by OK Samurai from the Adobe team, Dave Warner. So I fully, um, you know, go check that out to learn exactly how you can tweak the settings to get the most out of your character. Now, the only other thing I'll say is that this character does also come with a walk behavior. Now, if you press left and right on the keyboard, the character isn't going to walk. Now, the reason for that is that you'll see that this nose, as I mentioned before, is turning left and right. And the way that that turns left and right is that it's picking up. This is that one is known as frontal and this one is left. And what that does is it kind of stops the warp behavior working unless I've got the added bodies added. Um, so if you want to get your warp behavior working, you're going to have to do a little bit of hacking. So you're going to go into rig mode, and then you're going to find the nose, and you're going to turn one of them off, and then you're going to turn off where it's got it's tagged as quarter. And then if we go back into record, mode now if I press left and right just click on the screen I've been walking that way I've been walking backwards um, if you want your character to be facing the other direction you can just go into transform and find position X nope sorry scale position X and add in a minus there and then you can record a scene with it facing in that direction. Like I say, I do have a version of this puppet in the store where it does have the body turns. If you've got a slower computer, it might be a little bit laggy because the file is so big. And that's why I'm doing this streamlined version. Another big reason I'm putting this puppet out is that it is massively editable. So if you click on the puppet you're not going to see all this here when you open up your file you're just going to see the one that says um, in fact I'm going to change it to template man template man 2021 uh, 2023 and then so when you selected it and you press the PS it's going to open it up in Photoshop which is this file and what you'll be able to find is that all of these layers I've got overlays on them what that means is is that you can go in double click on where it says color overlay and change the color so let's change the color of the hair at the moment it's a kind of blondy color but let's change it to a more ready color and you can do that for all the eyebrows everything the clothing the lot so you know let's change the color of the sleeves as well and then all you got to do is press save and then go back into cater animator and it's going to update it and there you go 
So any changes you make to the Photoshop file, you can update to this puppet. Now I am going to, if I just click this file here, you'll see that there is a whole bunch of different hairstyles and I've made different noses. You see there's some chins and glasses and different face shapes. That means that I'm going to upload them to the store so you can really customize the puppet. But you don't just have to use my artwork. You can go into Photoshop and make your own artwork. Design your own nose. Design, um, bring in your own textures and logos for the clothing. Design your own hairstyles and customize the puppet to however you want it to look. So that's it. This puppet is going to go on the store and it's, the purpose for it is for it to be highly editable. I'm going to add some more on at a later date. I'll get the female one on as well. I added on a police officer yesterday. Um, and I am going to add on more specialised puppets. So, you know, like, um, I don't know, like a judge, a teacher, a fireman, um, a space cadet. I don't know yet. You know, if there's any particular ones that you think I should be putting up there, feel free to drop us a message and let me know. And it might be one of the next ones that I get put up. So that's it. If anyone has any questions about this puppet, how it works and whatnot, if you're seeing this video on YouTube, drop a comment below. If you're seeing this on our website, send us a message. It all comes through our email. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.